Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're taking a look at the Ergo 8 port PWM and ARGB hub for adding lots more RGB and lots more fans into your PC rig. Keep watching to find out how. Okay, so in today's video, we're taking a look at this. This is the Ergo, or Ergo, I'm not entirely sure how you pronounce that, but uh, make up whatever you want. This is the 8-port ARGB and PWM fan hub. Now this is actually really good if you're somebody who has maybe a lot of fans in your PC, maybe you've got a lot of addressable RGB, and you want to take some of that load off of your motherboard, which is obviously a good idea, you don't want to overload those headers. This is actually a really good way of doing it. It's relatively cost effective at somewhere in the region of about £18 here in the UK at the moment. There will be affiliated links in the video description so you can check it out for yourselves in your local regions. And it does appear that it, this is available actually in quite a few regions. So this should be valid for most people. So today we're going to go through, do a quick unboxing, and also we're going to talk about some of the lies that manufacturers tell you, which may lead you to not want to buy this or actually not have a hub at all depending on the type of fans you're using in your PC. Anyway, let's go through it. So start off with the packaging and what it's going to tell us. So obviously Ergo is the brand. It's got all the different RGB manufacturers on there. Essentially what this means is if you've got a motherboard with a three pin, five volt addressable RGB header, this is going to work absolutely fine for you. And even if you've got some sort of case or some other hub already, which has a three pin, five volt addressable RGB header, you can plug it into there and you can actually daisy chain it. And you can actually daisy chain multiple units of this. So this would then give you seven ports because you'll be using one of the ports to kind of daisy chain from. So you can effectively, if you've got maybe 20 fans in your PC, buy a few of these and you can daisy chain them together. Hopefully that will make sense to you. They will all be individually powered by their own individual SATA cable, so you don't have to worry about overloading specific ports or anything like that. On the other side, it goes through some of the other features. So again, ARGB hub, it's a fan hub. You've got eight ports on there for both ARGB and also for PWM. Motherboard sync supported, so if you're using something like MSI Center and you're using Mystic Light Sync, you can choose your colors in there and it'll go through your motherboard's header and then it will replicate that to every single one of the ports on here. Now that's something which is really important to try and get across in this video, is the fact that it is effectively a replicator. So even though it's got eight ports for fans and it's got eight ports for addressable RGB, every single port will be replicating what is the signal coming into it. So it's basically like a, a complicated splitter. So it's not gonna give you individual ports or individual channels. So if you want to have maybe three of your fans at one speed and another three at another and two other fans at another speed, that isn't something you can do. So it takes the incoming signal from the PWM header and it will replicate that across all the fans which are connected to the hub. And same goes with addressable RGB. If you've got an addressable RGB strip, which has only got 16 LEDs and you've got some fans which have got 12 LEDs, then it's kind of going to mismatch those together to try and work out what it can do, especially in some of those chase effects. Obviously, if you're going for static colors, it doesn't make any difference whatsoever, but do bear that in mind. So you won't always get exact replication of your addressable RGB effects, depending on the length of the strip you're actually connecting to it. Also, it says it has PWM support and RPM support. So in the MSI Center, which I've been testing this with, you can go into MSI Center and it will give you a tachometer reading or a RPM reading of the fan. Although this will only give you a readout of one fan. So like I said, this is a replication device. So all the fans are gonna be spinning at an approximation of what the first fan plugged in. So I would certainly recommend if you are gonna be using one of these devices, ideally you want to be using all the same fans if at all possible. If you're using a combination of say 120 mil and 140 mil fans, then the 140 mil fans will be kind of out of sync, but they will be trying to replicate whatever the primary fan is trying to do. Hopefully this will make sense. Last of all, it says it's SATA powered, which doesn't need any uh, any real explanation. You basically plug in a SATA port from your power supply directly into this unit, and this will provide all of the RGB and all of the fans power. On the back of the box, it goes through some of the dimensions. So it's 53 millimeters wide and 136 millimeters in length. Obviously, do take into account you will be having things plugged into the sides. So depending how big your PWM ports or your addressable RGB headers are, then they will take up extra room on the sides also. So that's the box out of the way. Let's take a look what we actually get inside it, which is the more important bit. So first of all, you get your instruction manual, which basically tells you how to put it all together. It's very clear, very concise. Although 
There is something on the back of here which actually is slightly concerning because it does mention the fact that you can use three pin fans. Now three pin fans are voltage DC controlled. Now I've actually tried this and using a four pin PWM fan, no problems at all, absolutely perfect. It reports the RPMs and controls the fan speeds accordingly. If you plug in a three pin fan, it doesn't work at all. Even if you switch your motherboard header to VDC or voltage DC, you have no control whatsoever of the fan speeds. Now this is very common amongst pretty much most hubs on the market these days. There's one or two that will do it, but they don't normally have other features as well. I'll put some links to those in the video description as well. So if you do have three pin fans you want to control, then there is an option for that, although they are slightly limited. Just to try and illustrate what I'm trying to say, so if you get a fan such as this, so this is Arctic's P12 PWM PST ARGB 0DB. This is a four pin PWM fan. This works absolutely flawlessly, even down to zero RPM. So that is no problems whatsoever. You can definitely use that. If you've got something like Corsair's SP120 RGB Pro, I have tested this. This is a three pin fan and works on voltage DC control. This does not work. Although it does work, but it will run at full speed, which is around 1400 RPM. It will stay there constantly, regardless of what settings you change, it will not affect the fan speeds. Also included is a cable to connect up to your motherboard. So there is a specific connector at this end. This plugs into the hub itself. There is a connection on there, just plugs in. And then you've got two leads coming off, one of which is gonna be your four pin PWM. And the other lead is your three pin five volt addressable RGB header, which is a standard type connector available on most modern motherboards. So that is all the connectivity required to the motherboard. On the other end, you have a SATA connection. So there's no fly lead or anything, literally get your SATA connection straight from your power supply, plug it into the end there. This will power it completely. There is also a very small LED actually on the hub itself, just so you know it's actually physically powered. That could be useful for diagnostic purposes if you're perhaps not getting any signal come through, no lighting or any fan spinning, that sort of thing. On the side, so this side is the four pin PWM outputs of which there are eight of them. Nice to see that they haven't enclosed it too much. So if you've got slightly bigger connectors, which are a little bit chunky, they will fit in very nicely. There is one at the end, which is marked in red. Now this is very important. This is the one that you should use for fan speed sensing. So if you're just using one fan, you'd plug it into port number one, as it says on the top there, it is all printed out on there. So you plug into that one, that will then send a signal via the PWM cable back to your motherboard and vice versa. So you can control the speed. And like I said before, fan port one is your basically kind of the master port. All of the other ports will be replicating whatever signal is happening there. So again, very important. They aren't eight individual channels, they are just seven other versions of channel one. So it's just replicating over and over. And exactly the same can be said for the addressable RGB. So you've got eight ports on this side. This isn't as important. So you can plug in if you've got a, maybe a shorter cable and you can't quite reach to port number one, which is marked up. You can plug it into port number eight. So L8 is for lighting, F1 to eight is for the fan. So it does make pretty decent sense. So yeah, plug them in wherever you want to. Now that there is some limitations on power requirements on this. So for the fan side of it, this will put out one amp per header and you cannot load it with more than 4.5 amps overall. Now most fans won't take up to an amp in current. So obviously do check with your fans on the back of your fan. It will tell you exactly how many amps that particular unit requires. Just don't overload it with more than 4.5 amps. When it comes to the addressable RGB side, we've got a very similar setup. So these will take 4.5 as a maximum per port, although you don't want to load it more than nine amps overall. So yeah, do bear that in mind. Look at the amperages actually on the addressable RGB device you're connecting. Just for clarity, I have actually connected up eight of the Arctic fans, the P12, PWM, PST, 0DB, etc., etc., um, and it works absolutely fine. So there's no problems there. Most fans I think you're gonna be absolutely fine with, just do check the voltages. It was prudent of me to mention it and to make sure that you're aware of it. On the back for installation, don't have any screws or anything. So there is a 3M adhesive pad. All you do is peel that off and you can stick it into the back of your PC, or alternately, you can just stick it in the back of your PC somewhere. You don't have to stick it down if you don't want to, but for some people, cable management-wise, you may prefer to do that. So overall, actually quite a nice little device, and if you're looking at connecting up a whole bunch of fans into your system, definitely worth taking a look at. I've seen some other ones on the market. There were from ID Cooling and others, which uh, you'll probably find from the videos listed in the video description below. 
various different prices. This one at the moment is one of the slightly more expensive ones, but it does seem to have very good availability, which has that going for it. And it does appear to be promoted quite heavily on Amazon at the moment, so you probably will be seeing this. Hence why I've made the video, because it kept on being popped up to me. I thought, well, I might as well try it and steal this light. So overall, I would say if you're using four pin PWM fans, definitely worth taking a look at. If you've got any three pin fans, steer well clear. This is not the hub for you. And apart from that, some slightly dubious marketing about saying that it is three pin fan compatible, which it kind of is arguably. You can plug a three pin fan into this thing, but you just have no control over it whatsoever. So anyway, hopefully this video has been useful to you. If it has, smash the like button and hit the subscribe button if you want to see more content like this on a daily basis. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.